All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about multiple sclerosis, and I have the honor of having Matt Jensen here, a neurologist, uh, with us. So, Matt, um, when you think about MS, you know, I'm sure you see scans like the one I have on the screen all the time. Do you mind just kind of walking me through step by step, kind of how you think about it, uh, and and what you see when you look at one of these scans? Yeah, you bet. You know, if we have somebody come in and they have uh, the kinds of symptoms that we would expect to see uh, with multiple sclerosis, we'll often do imaging of different parts of the nervous system. Mm-hmm. This is a scan of a person's head, and the type of scan is called uh, an MRI scan, which is short for magnetic resonance imaging. Uh, and that's a mouthful, so we often just say <laughs> MRI. Uh-huh. And there's lots of different types of images that you can make with an MRI scanner. And this is just one of the many types of images you can make. Okay. And the way this, uh, this is oriented is that the person's face is, is pointed toward the left side of the screen. I'm just going to sketch it out. Okay. This is kind yeah, of the exactly. nose. exactly. Their nose would be there. Yep. You got okay. it. Okay. And then... And then the back of the head would be on the other, on toward the right side of the screen. Okay. Because the scanner has to take the three dimensional structure of the head and then uh, turn it into these two dimensional images so we can look at them on screens and things like that. And so it's just taking a section through just part of the head. We're looking at just this one section. But you would actually have many sections you could kind of scroll through and look through the whole, whole three dimensional structure. Of just the to head. be clear, when you say section, you mean like slices like picture yeah slices? like 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 if you're slicing a loaf of okay, bread okay. um you could think of each one of these as like you're picking up one slice of bread and you're looking yep. at it how, how thick are these slices uh you can set that so there's uh there's all sorts of different settings you know a real common setting is is a uh, half a centimeter to one centimeter so they're pretty th- they're pretty thin okay so a few millimeters then i mean half a centimeter would be five yeah. millimeters so okay yeah, often that thin, and and that is the kind of thing that you can you can set with the computer how thick you want these to be. So when you look at this, what do you? I mean, I I, I could trace out the brain, and I, and I will. But wh- what do you first try to look at? Yeah, the the first thing we try to look at really depends on the kind of symptoms that a person had. So. You know, the nervous system does so many functions that when a person has an abnormality of their nervous system, the symptoms will often kind of point us to the area of the nervous system that we that is abnormal. Uh, so, you know, based on their symptoms, whether it would be things like weakness or numbness or changes to vision or trouble walking, um, we would examine the patient, do a physical examination, and then we would try to decide where the problem is. In this case... Uh, the, the person that saw this patient thought the problem was in the brain based on the symptoms they had and the abnormalities on their examination. Those sim- so that's why they got this scan of the brain. Those symptoms, I just jotted down two of them, but like weakness, numbness, those symptoms, like are these symptoms MS symptoms? These are very common symptoms of multiple sclerosis. Now, okay. they could be caused by all sorts of other disorders too, like right. stroke or cancer, or all sorts of things. And so they're... So kind of the pattern of, of what symptoms a person has and kind of the time course of their symptoms and uh, what kind of person they are, if they've got any particular risk factors for certain disorders, helps point us toward, you know, what we think might be the problem to begin with. <clears throat> when you say time course, like what would be a normal time course for MS for these symptoms? There, there are some different uh, forms of MS that have some different time courses, but the most mm-hmm. common is this one called relapsing remitting where they have these attacks of symptoms that often come on over a few days or a week or two. Okay. And then those those will often last for a few weeks to a few months, and they'll often see improvement after one of these attacks. So day, they come on days to weeks? Days to weeks is, a, is the kind of the typical speed of how fast these, these symptoms will come on. And then they get better? Yeah, and then they'll, the most common kind usually sees improvement between attacks. So they'll often see things get better over kind of weeks to months. And sometimes they'll have complete recovery. They'll get back to mm-hmm. 
Uh, but often they'll they'll not get quite back to 100%, and they'll be actually left then with a little bit of uh, abnormality of that function. To, to happen? Like, why does it happen in the first place, and how does it improve? Well, what we... What we think is happening is that the immune mm-hmm. system appears to be attacking some of the parts of the of the tissue of the brain and often the spinal cord. And okay. normally the immune system is just supposed to be fighting off infections and some other things. And for reasons that are unclear in multiple sclerosis, the immune system is actually attacking some of the body's own tissues. I'm going to circle this right here. Is this one of the spots? Yep, that, that that's abnormal. That's a being attacked that's by an, the immune system. An inflamed area in the brain where the immune system is is attacking parts of that tissue in the brain. Okay, and why is it white? It's white because this particular type of scan that we can make with the MRI scanner can see inflammation, and in particular, it can see kind of when there's more water in the tissue from inflammation. I'm circling a few more. I hope I'm not over circling, but nope. are these all kind of the spots? That's exactly right. right Those are all abnormal spots where the immune system. Okay. And this one is normal and it is something else entirely? Yeah, that, that there's some. there are some structures in those fluid-filled cavities in the brain that can have some different signal like that, and I think that's one of those structures. Okay, got it. So going back to then these these orange circles that I've made. So the immune system is attacking it, and mm-hmm. you said it's turning, well, it is turning white. What exactly is happening? Do we know, or is it kind of a mystery? Well, so in, in the brain tissue, we, we have cells called neurons mm-hmm. that process and transmit information. And just like you're drawing, they, they tend to have one kind of main part of their cell that we call the cell body or the soma. And then they often have this long thing we call a, an axon, this long tube-like structure called mm-hmm. an axon that transmits information from one area of the nervous system to another. Okay. And lots of the neurons in the brain need a material on that axon uh, called myelin uh, to help, help it electrically transmit information, which you can think of kind of simplistically like the rubber coating on a wire is similar to what this myelin is doing. Okay. And in multiple sclerosis, the immune system is actually attacking and stripping off that myelin there. And and when it takes away that myelin, then a lot of those neurons actually can't transmit information down their axon very well. And then whatever function those neurons were performing, whether it was telling muscles to contract so you can move or carrying sensory information from the skin, if they can't transmit that information, then the person will will notice that as a symptom, such as weakness or numbness. So the inflammation actually makes the myelin go away. Yeah, the immune system is causing this area of inflammation, and specifically it's targeting that myelin and stripping that myelin off the axons of of neurons. And this is happening, this inflammation is happening over days to weeks. Yeah, that's the typical kind of how fast this is coming on. So then tell me about the improvement. Like how, so is there more myelin? Do we make more myelin over weeks to months? Is that how you, it gets better? You, we think so. You, you can make more myelin, and we think a, a lot of the recovery is because the body's able to put more myelin back on a lot of those axons that have had the myelin taken off. Okay. It's possible there are other factors involved For instance, the nervous system can sometimes kind of reroute information through different neurons if some neurons are lost. That's interesting. It's almost like how you can take a different highway if one highway is full of traffic. You can potentially send information a different way entirely. Yeah, absolutely. And all sorts of disorders in the nervous system, uh, such as injury, we often see improvement over time. And that we often think is because the information is being rerouted through a different pathway. That's cool. So that's so that's basically it. That's what's happening in MS. You're basically having a problem sending signals, and that's why you get yes. the weakness and numbness that people get. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Now, uh, over time, unfortunately, most patients with multiple sclerosis will start to kind of accumulate these symptoms. So they won't have full recovery between each attack, and they'll kind of 
develop some progressive disability and loss of function. And uh, over time, they, they often will start to lose some neurons as well. And that probably contributes to this loss of function over time. So if their function, I don't know, let's, start, let's say it starts out like nice and, and high. Let's say their function starts out right here. Without MS, yep. they would just kind of go like that, right? They would just, that right. would be, let's say, mm-hmm. <coughs> a person without MS. And I- with mm-hmm. MS, you're saying they, they lose function, but then they get function. They get better and worse and better and worse. And, but over time, it just kind of gets worse. Is that? that that's that? perfect. Yeah, they'll have, over the short term, they'll be having these these attacks where they're getting worse and then better. But over the long term, unfortunately, most patients are progr- get developing progressive disability and accumulating deficits. Oh, wow. Okay. That really helps uh, kind of go over uh, how MS looks on a CT scan and, and what's happening. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Matt. You're very welcome. Thank you.